Hey everybody, Steve here. I'm going to do an impromptu video here today based on an email that I received from a gentleman. Uh, one of his questions happens to be something that I've never touched on before in any of my other videos, so I thought it would make for a good topic. Uh, his question is a two-pronged question, so let's get to the first part of the question first, and that is that he's got a Tiny Hawk 2. When he starts up and the quad is on the ground, spinning, it tends to bounce up and down. So. Having not seen firsthand exactly what it's doing and having no information as to what all of your settings are and everything like that on your radio and in beta flight, I can only take a, a general swing at this. And my very first thought is that perhaps there's nothing wrong at all. You're just not used to it. I don't know how much more experience you have with other quads, that sort of thing, but that's a possibility. I have a checklist of things that uh, that I, I look at when my quads are behaving badly. Uh, some of the things on that checklist is making sure that the props are on correctly, making sure that the motors are spinning the right way, making sure that your radio is properly calibrated, uh, making sure that your trims are centered. Have you gone into beta flight and calibrated your accelerometer? And when you move your quad around, does your quad match the movements on the screen? Only after I verify that all of that stuff is set up straight would I go into um, mucking with the PIDs. Hopefully that short checklist is enough to get you straight. It, you know, he goes on in his email to say that uh, it's factory set and he didn't do anything at all. So uh, I would go ahead and, and, and run down that checklist and see if hopefully something on that checklist uh, fixes your problem. And if not, let's continue the dialogue. All right, so now I want to get to the crux of this video, which is the second part of his question, which is about a very sensitive throttle. And can this be something with the PIDs? Well, once again, let's go ahead and back burner the PIDs and let's talk about the very sensitive throttle. There are many ways that you can iron out a sensitive throttle. Now, my area of knowledge is much greater in OpenTX than it is in Betaflight. I know that Betaflight offers some methodologies for which to iron out a sensitive throttle, but let me jump into OpenTX Companion and show you how I would do it if I was experiencing the same thing with one of my quads. And the first thing I'm going to do is go file and I'm going to open. Let's just go ahead and open a recent. Here's my, here's my Tiny Hawk right here. So I'm going to double click on the Tiny Hawk. All right, so the first way that I would do this in OpenTX is if you go to your input screen, you can see here that the throttle is set to 100%. All right, and there's no other, there's really no other variations from the default settings there. So with this throttle set at 100%, let's look at the simulator and let's see what that might look like. So I'm going to go to monitors and click on monitors. Pay particular attention to channel three here while I mess with uh, the simulator's throttle stick. And as I go through the full throttle range, it, it essentially has that 100% travel. One of the things that we can do to iron this out is go back. Now you could, you, you could do this in either inputs or mixes. Uh, I'll just do it right here. Uh, I'm gonna go to the throttle and double click on it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the weight and I'm gonna change it to 75. And now if we go back to our simulator, and what you see is that we have reduced the amount of throw in our servo. It's, it's only going from negative 75 to 75. But we're gonna have to make one more change here because Betaflight, uh, Betaflight's not gonna let it arm uh, unless it's at negative 100. So let me make one more change. So let's go back here and let's do an offset. We we changed the we changed the weight by 75. So I'm going to go ahead and add an offset in here of negative 25 as well. And then if we go to the simulator, so now we're back at negative 100, so that you'll be able to arm okay. Watch what happens when I throw the stick all the way back up to the top. Now remember earlier that would have been 100%. Okay, but you can see here that it's only 50% at this point. We've reduced the throw by 25%. Okay, here's, we're at negative 100 so that we can take off and we're throwing and we're throwing and we only get that far. We've reduced the amount of throw in the servo so that the servo is not as essentially responsive. All right, so that's one way to do it. Uh, another way to do it is, let me go ahead and, and, and change these back to the defaults. All right, so I just changed it back to the defaults, so from negative 100 to 100. So another thing that we can do is we can go into curves and I'm going to I'm going to make a stupid curve. We'll call this curve 1. 
I'm just going to make a stupid curve here for the purposes of demonstration. Let's, let's do that curve. And, and this is curve one. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back to inputs and I'm going to go to my throttle and we're going to say curve, we're going to use curve one. And this is a, this is something that you would never ever do. Um, but the purposes of, of doing it this way is to show you on the simulator. So now, all right, so now what happens? This is an exaggeration, obviously. Now, remember how flat that curve was. Um, I can move my throttle stick and look, nothing happens, nothing happens. Look, it's just, you talk about not being sensitive. Okay, that's not sensitive at all until I get to that last 20%. It's hard to do this with the mouse until I get to that last 20% and watch what happens when I get to that last what 20% or so it skyrockets okay so that is a flattening of the curve um, to make it obviously really sloppy right there and then way too responsive right there now obviously this is not the way you'd want to set up your stick but what it does do is it kind of shows what the curve does for you so what you'd want to do is you'd want to go and you'd want to make a more realistic curve all right so say you wanted gentle you know for that for that first little bit and you know i don't i don't know how how you'd want it but you know something along the lines of that might be a little bit more realistic where here, as we move the stick, we're getting less play. And then obviously, as we keep going through the stick movement, that is because of the curve that we drew, it's going to exponentially move faster. Okay. But down here, it's going to be a little bit more sloppy. So this really is going to boil down to a a matter of preference and of the two methods um, you probably want to start off with the other method first um, I guess you might probably get more predictable results that way than creating your own curves but I thought it was a great question it's something that I've never tackled before I know I said this earlier but you can also make changes in beta flight to do this admittingly so I am still learning beta flight uh, I consider myself a fairly decent beta flight user but I've got a lot to learn myself so uh, I'm not going to go into that right now just because I think it can I think it could be done here without trying to complicate matters more so anyhow I hope that was helpful to not only the um, the guy who sent me the email but to anybody else who might come across this video I help you mellow out that throttle so that thing is a little easier to fly all right, so that's going to pretty much bring this one to a close. I hope to uh, have helped. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit the little bell to get notifications of future videos as they come out. And if you really enjoyed the video, please do me a favor, share on social media, tell somebody. Go out and get a friend flying, because I'm going to tell you right now, if you think flying is fun all by yourself, you should go out there and fly with a friend. Get somebody into the hobby because it really is truly amazing and uh, the amount of fun that you can have uh, flying out there with uh, somebody else, it just makes it that much better. All right, I'm Steve. I'm out of here. See you in the next video.